So I'm going to unpack my suitcase today and show you one thing that's in it. Um, I truly believe that art has the power to change the world, but not unless we change the word first. In a world that defines art as a commodity to be slashed from education budgets, defines it as elitist and entitled, as something that I don't have time for in my life, or as something not me, then art cannot change the world at all. So if art is going to be able to change the world, I think that we right here today need to set it free. We need to kick art out of its nice, safe little nest and let it fly for everyone to see high in the sky. Let's invent and adopt into our mouths, our minds, our vision for our future, a new understanding of the word. If we can do that, then I believe that art can change the world. If we can reimagine those little letters, A, R, and T, as, and allow them to take up a new position in our world, allow them to play an active role in our lives, then they can change the world. You see, words have power. Yes, brothers and sisters, words have power. Can I get an amen? amen. Admittedly, I am biased because I am an English major. I know English majors have all kinds of rules and peeves and rigidities and we're kind of hard to get along with, but I'm an English major because I love words and I love the power of words. If we can accomplish my vision, I see a world in which everyone is an artist where all endeavor is equally appreciated. I see a world where time doesn't have to be stolen or borrowed or bartered for us to engage in creativity, where team-powered brainstorming is as uh, valued as individual expression, where governments, I see a world where governments realize the power of the creative in all of us to stimulate solution finding. I see a world where educational systems value STEAM more than STEM because there is undervalued art in each of those overvalued disciplines. The history of science, the design in technology, the architecture of engineering, and the music in math. Words definitely have power. But back when I was a kid, uh, I was told by grown-ups, generally, that words couldn't hurt me. Sticks and stones will break your bones and words will never hurt you. Did you guys believe that when you heard it? I didn't either. Even back then, I knew from personal experience that words have the power to hurt, to destroy, to burn, to consume, Anyone who has ever been bullied, anyone who has uh, been cut by the unthinking word of a friend or a loved one, anyone who has said something unintended, something that you immediately wanted to suck back into your mouth, you know that words have superpowers. But if words can destroy and tear down, can they not also create and solidify, raise up and glorify, illumine and magnify. Yes, brothers and sisters, words can magnify. Can I get an amen? amen. So how do we reimagine those three little letters? It's a powerful weight resting on a very small word, this change the world stuff. Well, I believe that our first step is pretty simple, but it's also fairly drastic. We're gonna add a few letters to A, R, and T so they're not so lonely, so they don't get so lost easily, so that they don't get lost so easily in big government budgets because they're so small. We're gonna add an I, an S, a couple more T's and R's, and tack on a Y, artistry. If we add these letters, my thought is that we will set art free to fly to its full potential 
What if art isn't rarefied, self-absorbed, contained in its little nest, but instead it is flying free and accessible to everyone? That's a world I can imagine, and if I can imagine it, then it can come to be. Here's what Gandhi really said. If we can change ourselves, the tendencies in the world will change also. So, starting today, we are going to stop thinking of art as, oops, sorry. We're going to stop thinking of art as uh, the substandard stepsister to math and science in our classrooms. Starting today, we're going to start thinking of art as artistry. And we are going to understand it as not merely the product of imagination, but rather the process of creation. Now, I would guess that everyone here would agree that there is artistry in decorating a house. But would you also agree that there is artistry in knowing how to hook up the plumbing in a house? Or what about keeping a house tidy and clean and safe and warm? Or what about replacing the roof on a house? Sounds like you guys think as I do. I think that there's artistry there. There's artistry in knowing how to hook up a Wi-Fi network. There's artistry in knowing how to drive a backhoe or a horse logging rig. There's artistry in keeping a classroom tidy. There is artistry in turning bricks into a wall and in changing the oil in a car. Certainly all of these things can be done badly, but I believe that if the people who are doing them, these, these tasks, are doing so to the best of their ability, then they are artists at their work. What a world we could have if the artists themselves recognized the artistry in their own accomplishments and knew it to be a part of themselves. Some scientists already understand this. C.S. Smith of MIT spent a lifetime studying oriental arts for the insights they offered into metallurgy. He said, I have slowly come to understand that the quantitative analytic approach that I have been taught as a scientist is insufficient. From any complex system, the richest aspects are found in things that can't be measured. For these, he said, the artist's approach both finds and conveys more meaning. I know this reimagining a word's definition is kind of a challenge, but I ask you, how many times have you stood in front of a beautiful painting or watched a potter throw a mug on a wheel or had a friend offer to help you make a splendid meal in your kitchen, and you thought to yourself, I haven't got an artistic bone in my body. <laughs> right? I know. I've been working with the Jacksonville Center for the Arts for many, many years, and I cannot tell you the number of times somebody has asked me, so, are you an artist too? Is that why you're involved with the Jacksonville Center? And I would invariably answer, no, I'm not an artist, I'm a writer. <laughs> what in heck was that all about? <laughs> what could I possibly have been thinking? Well, I'll tell you what I was thinking. What I was doing then is, I bet, what you're doing right now, and that is relegating art to a, an exclusive area where it is only in the collections of museums, or it's only for a bunch of six-year-olds with finger paints so that mom can hang something on the refrigerator with a magnet. That's in my past, you might think. Or, art, I don't get it. Or, it's not me. Well, today is the dawn of a new day. <clears throat> We're going to slip a toe under art curled in its nest and kick it right out of there so that it can soar as artistry. Here's what I want you to do. From here on out, Whenever you hear the word art, I want you to think of art as if it's a phoenix risen from the flames with artistry's plumage. Come on, we're Floydians. We're an incredibly creative community of people who love to invent, 
who love to explore the edges of reality and vision of what is possible. What we need to do is remember that the future is not a place we're going. The future is a place we will create. So, we here today are going to construct a future in which we will mindfully recognize that artistry is within everyone. Do you hear me, brothers and sisters? Artistry is within everyone. Amen. If we start now and stretch our understanding, not only the word itself, but our understanding of it, then we shall find artistry in each one of our neighbors, even the ones we disagree with. We shall find artistry in every day, in every moment, in every tree, in every holler, in every elected official. We shall find artistry in every task we undertake, in every relationship we nurture, in every greeting we extend, in every precious child. So, what say you all? Shall we construct that future? Yes. Here's how we might begin. Commit new attention to any old task you do every day. Or look at your friend or your spouse or your sister or brother and really think about, I mean, really think about the question, where is the artistry in this moment, in this person? An example, when you're driving home from this event, something that we all take for granted, if you look closely, you will find artistry in safely steering steel down a street. So if we first recognize and then take the difficult next step to value the artistry we will begin to see everywhere around us, then I honestly believe it will be more difficult for the bean counters to take it out of everything. If it becomes as ubiquitous as the air we breathe, if it takes root and grows and thrives in our very culture, then it cannot be just for the rich or something relegated to bake sale funding status or not me. Artistry abounds. Watch it soar and let it thrive in your lives, in our community. Together, we really, really can change the word, I mean, the world. <laughs>